Now that we've gone through how to deal with the towers, what about strategies regarding the more uh, challenging bricks, so to speak? The 2x3x4, 3x4x5, and even this guy. Well, I'm going to start off with this because um, this still looks enough like the towers uh, to where it's going to help in solving. And this will also help those that didn't quite catch it with a 4x4x5. So notice with this, again, this is going to be all 180 degree turns. Well, the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to create middles. Second thing we're going to want to do is make sure this middle is right. Then the third thing is um, create these edges. Uh, then we'll collapse it down to like a 3x3 three three version. And then we can just put these in. So we'll just kind of do a good scramble here. So this looks like a pretty good scramble over here. Now notice this can be scrambled by a variety of 180 degree, uh, of 90 degree turns. So we have a variety of different colors all along this axis here. This is really just these two colors that are over here. So the approach that I'm going to use when solving this guy is first off, because I have higher order than the threes here, is I have to define centers. So I'm going to put all of these in as a center, all of these, all of these. Once I do that, then I try to solve for the cross and use exactly the same strategy. My hope is that by going through this, this will assist with any confusion that may have occurred with this guy. <laughs> Hopefully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create all whites here and all yellows here. And again, this is done, quote, intuitively. Even if you don't quite know what you're doing, you can just kind of do it randomly. But over here, if I move this to the side, move this, move it over here, no, not quite. Move this to the side, I got two whites, two yellows, two whites, two yellows. And I can simply move this over here, bring this, whoop, move this like so, bring this up, and here and here. This was a shape-wise uh, puzzle. I bought the wrong stickers for it, but it still seems to work. Anyway, so I'm going to define this then as the white side and define this then as the yellow side. What I want to do now is I want to put middles in over here. So I'll make this orange. And then the question is what's going to go right next to orange if yellow is on the bottom. So I'm going to let my, uh, my corner pieces dictate that for me. So I'll just move one down since I don't have one. So this is the orange side, this is yellow, blue is going to be next. So I need to put the blue one in. To do this, you could do this intuitively. It's, always, it's, it's going to be the opposite side here. I'm free to move this edge uh, as much as I want, or this face as much as I want. To move this into here, this is just a very simple beginning strategy of doing a, a 2R, where this is all turned here, to you, 2R, to U, 2R. I assume you kind of know this, but just in case not, what that does is that maintains this and and sort of swaps these guys. It's, it's an opposite middle swap, basically. So orange, blue, I got the red one, blue, red. So yeah, that's just done intuitively. So basically I have all of my centers. That shouldn't be, shouldn't be a problem. Now once I do that, I have to get the edges in. And then I'm ready to perform the um, perform the strategies that, uh, that, that, that you've seen. To put the edges in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the yellow side. So here's a yellow and blue. I'm going to find the other yellow and blue to pair it with, and it's over here. I'm just going to turn this across, bring it up. So on this side, I've, I've got the yellow and blue down here. I've got the yellow and blue up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this, turn this twice to meet it over here, bring it off to the side, okay, to get it out of the way. So that's out of the way. Now I got to move these back. So I'm going to just turn this again because it's not going to disrupt this. Turn it twice here so that I can move this back while what I made is protected. Then I'm going to move these middles back. All right. So what I did if in, in, in effect is I created this edge. My goal is to turn collapse this down to a 3x3 three three, and I'm just going to follow suit. So here's a green and yellow, red and yellow. Here's a green and yellow here. I'm just going to move this to the opposite side. And my plan is to create it here and put it back over here too. Actually replace it with this one.
So double turn it, so I put it here, and I'm gonna put it over here. But what I wanna do is I wanna knack um, this one out. So I'm gonna double turn this down. So I'm gonna move this into where this, where the one that I just created is. Move it in, and I did that because I'm now gonna double turn this, because I gotta move this back. When I double turn it, this is now protected, and this that I put in harm's way comes back and knocks this useless one out, and I bring this back in. I hope I didn't move too fast with this, but basically I just created two yellows. I'm gonna do the same thing and put it on the other side, exact same strategy as I would use with this. <clears throat> so here's a yellow and orange. Find the other yellow and orange, it's here. So move it twice. Only this time I'm gonna move my completed edge not to this side, but to this side. So move it twice, there it is. Turn it here. So do a U over here. Turn it like this. I'm not going through algorithms because I think this is fairly intuitive or strategic. And then move it back here. So now I've got these two here. I've got this here. And now what do I have left? I've got the red and uh, yellow. Where's the other red and yellow? Just happens to be here. I've got to double turn this. So the red and yellow is put up here. Double turn it like so. Now what I want to do is I want to replace it with this one. So I'm going to turn this down so that I can move this into here, right? So turn it here. Double turn it so that when I move it back, I'm knocking this useless one out for now. Useless for now. Move it back <clears throat> and bang. So what I've done is I've created all my yellow edges, which is good. So I'm just going to put them in place. This yellow edge is already in place, so I'm going to put that by its center. Here's a red one, find the red, double turn it. Here's a blue one, find the blue, double turn it. And here's a green one, it's already there, double turn it. So what I now have is I have the cross on the bottom. Okay, what about the white side? Now I've got to put these in. To those of you who have seen and actually understood this tutorial, See? Um, it's exactly the same way. What I want to do is, this is already in place, that's good, but where's the green and white? It's over here. I need to move this over here. So what I'm going to do is, my, is, is I'm going to pretend like these don't exist, and I'm going to pretend like these are corners and not edges. And I'm going to do a corner switch from here to here. I just have to be sure that my R move is like this. And if I do the corner switching algorithm, then it's going to move this to here. And that, as you recall, is going to be 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. I have a middle down here, so I have to turn this by a UI and turn this by a D. It's like turning the whole thing, but keeping the middle straight, because as, as you recall, we don't want to offset what we did. Then 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R. This is maintained, and we did indeed do exactly that. We move that into position. This is already in position, so is this, so is this. And you just do a variety of that. If this green one weren't here, but here, you do it once, and then you do it again. And eventually you'll, you'll get it back. Put it back in a cross position. Are we in a cross position here? Yeah, we are. But what if we weren't? What if we had a situation like this? A situation where this is in place, this is in place, but these two aren't. So how are we gonna get that? Well, now that we've created an edge, let's treat it as such. Let's pretend these are fused together. Before we move these guys so that we can flip these like they were corners, now treat them like they're edge, edges. We have to swap these. So we just do the middle, um, we do the middle edge swapping algorithm, but now we're gonna turn it from here so that these guys can move together. So, so 2R, U, 2R, U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. And that put it back in. So the thing that I like about that is it uses all strategies, all algorithms that we already know. It's just applied to this area. You just have to kind of think outside the box a little bit. And then it's easy. Then you solve it just like your, your layers. We've got the middle, so we apply intuitive strategies with this. This was not a cuboid, so 180 degree turn should do it. So here, this just has to turn with this. 
bang, and we're good. Of course, we messed this up. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, and this is how it's usually going to work with this. So this is like a parity situation. And we know that we can get in and out of parity situations as we start solving these. So I'm going to keep it like this, and hopefully it'll solve by itself. If not, we can do a parity solve to get it out. We can actually do that parity solve to get it out just for the sake of argument. So we hold it like this, where one is on the left, the other is on the right. And to flip these two, um, we're going to do the parity algorithm that just has one. Now this is different than a parity algorithm where you have two that's there. Here's an example of that. So the classic parity situation is where you have two that are off. <clears throat> this is a case where one is off. And you also just have one above, one below. So in this particular case, as you recall, to fix this, this is the URF. So you split it down here. 2U, 2R, 2F. Then you do a 2U splitting it down here, 2U. Then you do a 2U again splitting it up here, 2U. Then finish it up with F, R, U. So 2F, 2R, 2U, and that fixes this. Then here, 2U, 2R, 2F. And now you do your 2U, but it's just one time and it's just right above that. Then finish it off with, a, we don't do the one above that because there is none. Then 2F, 2R, 2U. And then when we do that, we finish that off with another 2F. And you can see it brought that back. So that's how we would do that. Now be prepared because when you do that, you're going to create a parity right on the opposite side, which is what we did over here. And then when you do that, you can see that it's another 2 parity, and we can put that in. Um, we could just turn it like this, but that defeated our purpose here. So we hold it like this and do it the same way we did with this guy. 2U, 2R, 2F, 2U, 2U over here, and 2F, 2R, 2U. So that strategy will serve you well Put that back and you can solve almost any cuboid with that. So in short, we put our middles in and now we solve it exactly the same way as, a, as any domino technique. Here's the yellow, green, and red, which means we need to go over here. Now we could have put that parity in just by doing this next step, but I just wanted to show you once again the difference between that um, parity fix. This is perfect because this red will go here, this green will go here. <clears throat> 2R, U, 2R, UI. 2R, there it is over here. We created the parity here, which we're going to fix by putting this in line by the blue and orange. So we find the blue and orange. Here's the blue and orange. 2R, 2U, yeah, U rather. 2R, UI, 2R. So we've got this bottom over here. This is, uh, and we fix this parity. This is bounced in the wrong place, so we're just going to bounce this up. So 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. So there it is here. We created parity here. Put this in the right place. The, the blue and red, which is here. And it's really as simple as this. So there it is here. Got ourselves out of that parity. <clears throat> We're gonna put ourselves back into it by solving this. And here's our bottom. So our bottom is solved. Got the parity here. Now we just solve the top. Pretend like this is one. We have the sandwich formation here, but nowhere else. This gets moved off to the side. And we do our 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. Once again, move this here and here as we're rotating these two, keeping the center straight. 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R. And we've got sandwiches, sandwiches everywhere. Now we just do middle swapping like before. We'll swap these two. 2R, U, 2R, U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, U, 2R. UI 2R. This did fix that parity. This comes here. This comes here. We just have these two to fix. It will create parity, but we're old hands at that now. So 2R U 2U 2R 2U 2R U 2R 
UI to R. And we're almost done. We just have this parity situation where there's just this one. So we know we're going to put this in line and end up with the parity on the other side. So we'll just kind of go through the motions. Um, to U, to R, to F. Then do a 1 to U, to F, to R, to U. Finish it up with the 2F, that's in place, created our expected parity over here, to R, I'm, I'm, yeah, to U, to R, to F, but this time U, to U, and to U up here, and to F, to R, to U, and you solved it using the same strategies. I hope you caught that. If you didn't catch it the first time with this, it's exactly the same thing. Um, all the rest of the strategies with this, I'll refer you to the other tutorials.